Wednesday Night Live with Prayer Valley Church. And as always, it's an honor to be able to bring the word of the Lord. Um, I'm excited about what the Lord is saying and doing uh, all week long, and especially just today, then driving it home. I even talked to Pastor Beth about it. The Lord tells, told me that, uh, you know, a lot has happened in the arena politically, yeah. spiritually, mm -hmm. uh, in the United States, right? Yeah. And so people are like, hoorah, right? Yeah. But the Lord spoke to me this week. I was talking about it, and the Lord told me, now it's time to fight. That's right. And I said, what? Because we feel like we just won. Yeah. Right? But the Lord told me, now it's time to fight. Yes. And I asked the Lord about it. He said, I'm going to give you a platform for victory. Wow. Right? Amen. And as uh, I heard uh, Sister Michelle say last week, uh, and I've ministered it a few times before, and that is that we all start from a foundation of victory. Yes. Right? And we continue to walk into victory. That's right. Right? So we don't start from mm -hmm. a foundation of defeat. No. So this is what the Lord is showing me spiritually, that we have come into a foundation of victory. Yes. Now it's time to fight. Amen. Amen. That's good. All right. And, and uh, there's a lot to fight for, but I want to talk to you a little bit about that tonight. But before I do, amen, Pastor Beth has some announcements to make. Amen. Amen. We've got the men's breakfast coming up December 7th at 9 a.m. And amen. And we've invited uh, the, 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 the section, the district section churches all yes. over the valley here yes. and they're coming amen. amen praise god so it's going to be it's going to be really awesome the guys are going to get together um it's going to be at prayer valley at 14172 avon avenue december so 7th. december 7th 9, 9 a.m we, you we're don't want to miss it we're bringing in a special speaker amen <clears throat> i'm excited about that too and so and the breakfast I hear it's going to be amazing. Yeah, we got Mikey Stevens going to help us out cooking. And, and Sister Kristen Christy. Blair is going to come yep. down and help us cook. So, amen. And anybody else that wants to volunteer, right? That's right. Anybody else, amen. They need help. Male or female, just come and cook. And then right after that, the following Saturday, which is December 14th, our women will be having their Christmas brunch. We do every year. We get together. We fellowship. We have an awesome time. Uh, Pastor Lisa will let you know on what to bring. Um, and what kind of exchange gift to bring, but we always have a blast. Us women, we just, it's a, it's a time to fellowship. It's a time to really get to know people when they first come to the church, you know, um, you just really don't want to miss it. Amen. You don't want to miss it. Special speaker That's also. Right. You don't want to miss it. All right. We're going to have a great time. There's a lot going on. There is. There is. Uh, of course, you know, uh, let me reiterate, of course, that we've lost, uh, a, a precious loved one, uh, Andrew, who was just, uh, everybody loved Andrew, yes. and that continue to pray for the Verdos family. Yes. Amen. Uh, continue to pray for the German family. Some of you may not know that Jose German has passed away also. We'll be doing his service tomorrow. Yes. And Andrew's will be on the 25th. Yes. Uh, in Tracy. So we'll, the church, we will make more announcements about that to the church. Um, but continue to pray for their families, please. All right. It's, it's a, uh, it's a tough time. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh, but that makes even even terrible things like this that happen kind of make what the Lord has spoken to me tonight uh, even uh, more relevant yes. for today, right? So I believe that God <clears throat> has really prepared uh, a foundation of victory for us, yes. right? We prayed for it. Uh, you know, we we don't have to look to the past. You know, we don't have to be frustrated about the past where the election was stolen. Because right. we know it was, yeah. You know, nobody yeah. gets eighty-one million votes, right? Uh, <laughs> like, come People on. People got smarter this year. <laughs> I mean, Obama. Obama only got sixty-six million. So, right. So, come on. But uh, you know, we don't. Let's let's leave the past. Let's forget yes. about all that. Because yes. now God has prepared. A, 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 a foundation, right? Yes. So the Bible says, if my people, mm -hmm. which are called by my name, mm -hmm. will humble themselves and pray, right. seek my face, right? Yes. And turn from their wicked ways, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Then will I hear from heaven yeah. and heal their land. So I believe that we are at an opportunistic time to really see God move uh, in our country as well as in our homes. Because I can tell you that when God moves in our country, it affects our homes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so I, I want to, I want to tell you, I want to uh, pre, I want to teach you a little bit about the condition 
of things and a lot of times why things happen and why they don't happen. So uh, let me let me let me set the stage here. So turn your Bibles with me to the book of Numbers chapter 14. Amen. In the book of Numbers chapter 14, Israel had just come out of Exodus, right? And yes. They had uh, they had seen the miraculous of God. I mean, he had brought them out. He had opened the door. He had made a way. He had kept them. He yeah. had protected them. He had provided for them, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he had told the promise that they were going into was a promise from God. Yes. Right? I, I, it's like a, I prepared this place. I, there's a land for you, right? There's mm-hmm. a, it's, it's the promised land. It's a promise for you, right? So, you know, in the plan of God, he's established this. He calls Moses and tells Moses what to do. He goes and Moses is obedient and he talks to the people and he talks to Pharaoh. And eventually, you know that it was, there was a terrible time, a terrible battle. There was a lot of warfare, but at the same time, we can see that in, in, in the hard times in the desert and the wilderness, we could see that God appeared to them as a fire by night and a pillar by day. Yeah. God provided food for them supernaturally. God yes. parted the Red Sea. I mean, right, there was tremendous things that God did that they experienced, right? Now we know that they failed and did some things wrong, but God still loved them and kept and still brought them to the point right. of where they, he brought them to that point. Yeah. Right? He got them there. Mm-hmm. Right? And and that is what I want to say to you today is that where you are, God has got you there. Yeah. He got you to this point. He he's been for you. He's never left you nor forsaken you. You've had good times, bad times, terrible times, hard times, tearing times. At the same time, you've had fun times, happy times, joyous times. Right? Mm-hmm. We've experienced love and hate and everything that there is. And so, let me read this to you before I start babbling on. All right. Numbers 14, I'm going to begin reading in verse 17. Here we go. And now, please let the power of the Lord be great as you have promised, saying the Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, forgiving iniquity and transgressions, but he will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquities of the fatherless, uh, excuse me, of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Please, Pardon the iniquities of this people, according to the greatness of your steadfast love, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt until now. Now God's promise, then the Lord said, now listen to this, then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, but truly as I live, and as all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, none of the men who have seen my glory and my signs that I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and yet have put to me and have put me to the test, Mm -hmm. right? He's talking like, I brought you out of all this and y'all still Mm. are not trusting me. Right. I brought you out of this and you don't trust me. You're not listening to me. Uh, You're not obedient to me, right? This is God. Yes. Where was I at? La, da, da, according to your word, but truly as I live and is all the earth shall be filled <coughs> with the glory of the Lord. None of the men who have seen my glory and my signs that I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and yet have put me to the test these 10 times and have not obeyed my voice. None of them shall see the land that I swore to give their fathers. And none of these who uh, despise me shall see it. Mm-hmm. Right? Verse 24. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land into which he went. And his descendants shall possess it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And his descendants shall possess it. I Mm -hmm. could keep reading. I want to. So I hate to say this, and I I, I do, but you know, I'm I'm a truth preacher. Uh, Some of y'all think that preaching comes easy, but it doesn't. Because see, there's a bound, there's a there's a thing about loving people, wanting to be liked, not wanting to offend people. Yet at the same time, there's a spirit in you that says offend them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to let you guys know that uh, a lot of you people that I offended in 2024, work on yourselves so I don't have to do it again in 2025. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. So. 
I hate to say this, but one of God's most effective ways of getting us to obey is through adversity, right? Yeah. And and in life, it's easy to to get unfocused and to get distracted. It's also easy to give in to the warfare and the fears of the world and, yeah. you know, the financial problems and the, you know, what's going on in the government, what's going on all around us, the, yeah. you know. True. But in the book of Numbers here, we see that that God had stayed with Israel. Yes, he did. You understand? He sure did. God directed his people to a place to receive. Mm. He prepared the foundation of victory yes. the whole way. That's good, Pastor. I mean, they, they yeah. watched plagues unfold and they watched, yes. uh, you know, uh, you know, they saw uh, that God provided manna for them and they saw, they, they saw the, the oceans or the seas spread yeah. open and walk yeah. on dry land. They had come so far in the Lord and then they get to this land and 12 spies go over to see this land see they're really going over there to see what they have to do to to possess God's promise <coughs> right right so God's promise doesn't always just fall out of the sky on your life uh, or on your home or on your yes. finances or whatever yeah right there was there was work to do to receive yeah. There was there was work and faith without works is dead. Right. So they go over there and ten of them come back and say, "Oh no, we're, they're, they're, we're like little grasshoppers. The people over there are massive men and they will destroy us." And yeah. of course, Jacob and, and, and I mean uh, Joshua and Caleb come yeah. back and said, "No, nah, we can take them. Let's do it right now." Yeah. Right? So yeah. uh, so you know, Israel all of a sudden says, "Nope, we ain't doing it. Uh-uh. We ain't doing it. We ain't doing it. We ain't doing it. We're afraid." We're afraid of the next level. We're afraid yes, of the next go. phase. There you go. That's We're right. afraid, right? We might die. Mm-hmm. Hello? we probably get killed. Yep. And here's the thing. The truth of the matter is, is that every level you go to, you have to kill a giant or the giant's going to kill you and you're not going to take the level. Ooh. You're not going to go higher in the Lord or wider in the Lord or deeper in the Lord yeah. if you're not willing to destroy a giant. That's Amen? Right. If okay. you're not willing to fight, if you're not willing to fight for the promise what makes you think that God's going to give it to you when faith without works is de dead, right? So, yes. so God directed his people into the pro to, to, to this place to possess the promised land. And he told them to go, go, you know, go, go do it. And they, they refused. They're like, uh, -uh. fear and reason, fear and reason. Well, what if I lose my home? What if I, what if I lose my, what if it costs me all my finances? You know, it ain't going to cost you all your finances because half of you don't tithe, so it don't matter. So you, you just think, I mean, it's just true. It is true. You know, trying to get finances out of people nowadays is lit. And people say, we just don't have it. Well, you live pretty good. Come on. Anyway, God directed his people to go into the promised land, destroy, you know, to defeat the enemy right. and take the promised land. Yes. Right. But because of fear and reason, they refused to enter God's promised land. Yet they still wanted it. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's like people want a miracle, but they don't want to pray for it. They, yeah. They yeah. just want to name it and claim it. They just want to. They don't want to hit their knees and, and cry yeah. out yeah. for mercy and travail before the Lord for days. Yeah. They just want a Lord, heal my daughter. Amen. And then, you know, nothing happens like, oh, God didn't heal my daughter. Oh, my. You know, you because you didn't work. You didn't do nothing for it. You just name it and claim it and, you know. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. All right. So they still wanted it. They had journeyed. A great time. They had come a long ways for it. Mm -hmm. They left Egyptian bondage for God's promise. Yeah. For the land, promised land. They had seen God's miracles, power over and over. But because of fear and dismay, right? It had entered their thinking. Yes. Right? Yes. It had entered their thinking and it had entered their heart. So they became a heartless people yeah. towards the promises of God. They still wanted it though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. God said, nope, you can't have it. That's right. And that's a, that's a, he said, that's... no, you can't have it. We ought to learn a lesson from that. Yeah. What he said here in the book of Numbers, he said, I'll tell you what, all of you people that were disobedient, mm -hmm. all of you cowards, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That weren't willing to die for it. You're going to wander in the desert and die. Yeah. And then your children are going to possess the promised land. Yeah. That's what he said. The next generation, the next generation is That's going to right. possess it. So, uh, you know, God said, nope, you can't have it. So 
In the book of Proverbs 19.20, it tells us to listen to God's instruction. Here's, here's how it says it. I'm going to see if I can find it. I hope that's it. Uh, it says, listen to God's instruction that you may gain. Wow. Hello? Yeah. And, and some interpretations say gain in wisdom. Mm -hmm. Some say gain in knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Some say gain the future. Yeah. Right? There's different interpretations of that word. Yeah. Wisdom. Uh, so, you know, I don't get caught up in this interpretation here and this interpretation here, this interpretation here. I read the King James, then I break it down through the study, uh, student study Bible, uh, the, the uh, English translation, American Standard. I break it down through that. Yeah. And then I go into a, 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 my commentary mm -hmm. and, I, and I study the commentary on the, the, what the, what the uh, theologians wrote right. about right. it and what, what words meant then. Yes. Right? What words meant for 5,000 years, 4,000, 5,000 years ago, yeah. rather than what they are now. Because we know now that bad is good and good is bad and cool is hot and hot is cool. And we know, right? Yeah. We know that sick is awesome, but awesome is sick. And you know what I mean? Yeah. All, everything changes. So we need to know yeah. by rightly dividing the word what the scripture is saying to us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let me get on with this. So when Israel weren't, they weren't willing to fight for God's promise, God said, said, okay, then you won't get it. Simple. Right. You, you're not willing to fight for it. Yeah. You won't get it. Now here's the trippy thing. If you y'all finish reading this because immediately when God said, fine, you don't get it then mm -hmm. immediately they, they said they had a change of heart. Yeah. Immediately it was like, oh no, no. Yeah. Oh, oh no, we didn't mean that. Oh no, we'll yeah. Oh no, we we we're sorry, God. We didn't mean that. We weren't being dis we didn't mean forgive us for being disobedient. We're sorry, Lord. You know what God said? Too late. Right. It's too late. I done saw your cowardice. I done saw your 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 fear. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I done saw your plans. Yeah. Huh? I done saw your servanthood. I done saw your obedience. I saw your heart. Right. And that's the thing that you really need to be afraid of. When he sees your heart, what does he see? Oh. Hello? That's good. Yeah. I'm not afraid of not getting that promise. Yeah. I'm afraid of when he sees my heart, what does he see? Yeah. Because the Bible says that the terror, which is fear or even more than fear, but the the dread of uh, God seeing us is, yeah. is, and knowing that he sees us is the beginning yeah. of having wisdom, right. right? And this is what that scripture means right here in Proverbs when it tells us to listen to God's instructions that you may gain in wisdom, yeah. right? Yeah. That you may gain the future, that you may gain knowledge, right? So when Israel wouldn't fight for God's promise, God said, okay, <laughs> don't then. You don't want to fight for it? You don't get, get it. it. There you go. Everything had been laid out for them, just like us. Yeah. Right now, there is a foundation being being laid out for us Amen. to fight. We can pray abortion back to hell. There Are you, you hearing go. me? There we you can go. pray same sex marriage right back to there hell. You, go. you understand that we can get we can pray prayer back into our schools. Yeah. You understand this? That we can pray. For, for the, 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 the blessings of America. God bless America. We can pray yes. that the blessings of God and opportunity are here. Amen? Amen. We can pray prejudice right back to hell. And we can pray all of the strongholds of the enemy. Yes. We can shove them right down the devil's throat. Yes. Amen. If we fight. Yeah. Right? If we'll I, fight. I agree. Yes. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. No. They're mighty through God. Yes. God's not asking you to just fight. What Israel failed to even say is that after all that God had done, even what he had done to Pharaoh's army, God wasn't just sending them in there to fight. God was going to equip them. Yes, he God was, was going to be with them. Yeah. God was going to yield the sword in their hands. The Holy, the Spirit of God was going to yes. be there, right? Yes. So God said to him, you all have treated me with contempt. Y'all will never see the promised land. You've treated me with contempt. I had to look that up. Contempt is disrespect. Wow. Right? Yeah. Disdain. You've been disobedient. In the scripture, God uses this word contempt 
which means all of the above, but mostly it means you've pro- you've provoked me by not believing me. Yeah. Hello? Mm. That's what they did. I don't know about you, but I would rather fight the Amalekites and the yeah. Canaanites. Yeah. I would rather fight Goliath yeah. than God. Oh, yes, definitely. You understand that? Oh, yeah. I'm just uh, There was yeah. no fight here because God said, no, yeah. you're not getting the land. Yeah. You're not getting it. No. Yeah. There was no begging him. There was no naming it, claiming it. There was no commanding it. I command the hand of God. There was none of that faith jumping up. <laughs> right? God said no. This is why we need God to say yes. Yeah. Amen? We need to know that God is for us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? That's right. We need to know that God put an excellent spirit in us. Yes. Right? We're warriors. That greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, right? Our weapons are not against each other. They're not against other people. They're not against liberals. They're against devils and demons that have exalted themselves into high places. Amen? If I look a person in the face and they're in total opposition to God, I don't say, you know, oh, you're just, you know, look, I rebuke you. No, I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. I rebuke Satan. I rebuke the stronghold. I rebuke the lies and the enemies. I rebuke the wrong mindset and the wrong heart in the name of Jesus. You have to leave this person in the name of Jesus. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go after people. A lot of times people think preachers go after them. Right. You know how many times people have come to our church and they want to know who told their 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 pastor all about them. Your pa- who who told your pastor? And I'm like, nobody told me. That's God. It's not even me. I don't even take no credit for it. Right. It's the Holy Spirit. Yes. He followed. He's with you. He walked you in. He wooed you to get you there. He set up the circumstances for you to arrive. He was there when you sat down in the pew. He was there when the pastor took the microphone. He was there when the word began to go forth. And he knew exactly what to say to you. Yes. Amen. Good word. Good word. (laughs) Truth. God's promises are not... See, God's promises are conditional. That everybody says, oh God, his love is unconditional. Absolutely his love is. Yeah. But if you think the promises of God are there for you to take advantage, not. amen, yeah. or to play games, you know, Israel lost God's promise here in Numbers. Yeah. And then if you, you and, and if you keep reading, you'll find out that they changed their mind. They wanted God. No, 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 please, 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 God. Right? But it's too late. Yeah. Right? It's too late. And everybody thinks, well, what does that have to do with us? It's the same people, man. I deal with the same people in the church today. The same mindsets. No matter what God has done, they forget. They're fearful. They don't want to lose what they've gained in this world. They don't want to give up anything. They don't want to sacrifice anything. Right? They want to drop their hundred bucks in the pan or their ten bucks or their twenty bucks and hear a good sermonette. Right? They want to experience, they want to feel the, they want to feel the, Song service, right? Yeah. No, I'm just telling you the truth. They're, right? Because, and, and this is why people stay at Prayer Valley for a little while. And unless they cross that line, they burn rubber because, man, we stomp the hell out of the devil. Literally. Our worship stomps the hell out oh, of the yeah. devil. Every preacher stomps yes. the hell out of the devil. Yeah. Our Sunday school stomps the hell out of the devil. Yeah. You know that? So, it's the same. Obeying God's instructions uh, today. So you obey God's instructions. And you know what God will show you? How to go take the promise. Here's the problem. People don't want to go take the promise. They don't want to fight for it. They want God to just... They just want to fling fling on them. They think the government's going to do it. Oh, we voted in Trump. We're going to win now. (laughs) You ain't winning crap. Unless you get on your knees mm-hmm. and figure out the plan and purpose of God yes. and, and, and go take the promise that God, go take yes. the promise that God has promised you. Don't let the enemy have it. Don't be a coward. Amen. I never seen so many cowards when it's time to pay tithe. <laughs> They're cowards. Yeah. Oh boy. We ain't going to have nobody Sunday. <laughs> See, God has brought us so far. Yet we still lose his promises through disobedience. Because yeah. God is, his promises are conditional. Yeah. You know, people think they're not, but they are. Right. God loves you unconditional, but he's not, he's not an unconditional God. 
You understand that? Yeah. He he wants to build personal relationship with you through Christ Jesus. Yes. Right? He wants to empower you through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Why would he need to empower you if he was just going to do everything? Right. Why would he send you? Right? Why would yeah. the Bible say in the book of Acts that you shall receive power yeah. when the Holy Spirit comes upon you? Why would you need power if God was just going to do it all? Yeah, true. You know why you need power? You need power so you can stomp through the jungles and dredge, yes. dredge, you know, dredge through the fire. Yeah. Why do you need power? So you can get out there and hustle your butt off getting souls saved and people yeah. delivered. You know why you need power? So you can show your family that Jesus Christ is yes. real. Yes. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Why do you need power? You need power so that you can overcome. Amen. It's true, you know, most people, <laughs> I got to say it, you know, most people can't even believe God when he says to bring ye all the tithes and offerings into the storehouse. And I ain't receiving an offering. Keep y'all tithe, man. Stuff it as far up your bank account as you can, because you're going to need it. When he says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house. And then he says, this is a promise. He says, prove me now, test me, yeah. prove me, do this, right? Yeah. Prove yeah. me. And I promise, I will open the windows of heaven yes. for you. Amen. For who? For you. For you. For who? You. For you. That's right. Right? Not for Joe Blow over here, no, it's for Tom, you. Dick, and Harry. No. For who? It's personal. Yes. It's personal. I will open the windows of heaven for you. Amen? Amen. And that pers that gives us... The, now, the windows of heaven doesn't mean that gold and silver fall out of the sky. Right. right? And then right. it's all hunky-dory and joy. And the wind is blowing and the birds are flying. The windows of heaven means that God's giving you access. Amen. Right? He's giving you access to holiness. Access to his presence. Access, hello, to the heavenly realm. Amen. Praise He's giving God. you access. Yes. And, and that's a promise. But it's a promise to the faithful. Yes. Amen. Sadly for this, people uh, are kind of like Israel. It, it, you know, for some people, maybe it's too late. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it was too late for Israel. They didn't stop being Israel. This is what blew me out of the water. Nowhere did it say, you're not my people. No. Right? No. They didn't not. stop being Israel. That's right. God just told them, now you're going to have to, you're not going to get the promise. You're going to wander in the wilderness. Wander. Ooh. But your children, I don't even, your children can get it, right? Right. But you, you can't. Right. So they didn't stop being Israel. That, that's a powerful thing to think about. Yeah. Right? They didn't stop being his people. Right? Right. Think about how powerful that is. Yeah. So just, we think just because we're God's people, we're yeah. entitled to something. Right. The sense of entitlement. That's the world, man. You in the wrong religion. You need to be yeah. worshiping Satan Ooh. if you have a sense of entitlement. You know, all these false liar preachers, man. I don't even want to. I want to name names, but I'm not going to. No. They have a platform to use for God, but they use it for self-gain. And they, they teach people lies and hypocrisy. And they teach them about money and, and claiming things that aren't God. And claiming things of the world that are not the will of God. And... Amen. Amen. Please, please, if you go to our church, Prayer Valley Church, please don't listen to that stuff. Please stop. Yeah. All right? Please. I'm asking you, I'm instructing you as your pastor, stop listening to those people. All right? You know who they are. You already know. You're like, oh, I wonder who he's talking about. No, you know. <laughs> you know. So sadly, this people of Israel, who God never said, you're not Israel no more. He never, he never said, you're not my people no more. Right. So what I can tell you is that the next time God told Israel to do something, I bet they did it. <laughs> right? Yep. I mean, I, I don't know. know. I I, I I've read numbers, and I might keep reading numbers and yeah. Leviticus and all. I know you just Ooh. read Leviticus, right? Yeah, and numbers. And numbers. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the next time he told them to do something. Huh? How about you? Are you willing to lose God's promise mm -mm. Uh, over fear and doubt and no. disobedience? Because it's ha it happens all oh, the yeah, time. It does. People want to know why the prophet lied. The prophet didn't lie. You failed. Hello. Yeah. So this is what the Lord told me. 
Find the promises of God in the word. Quit taking them from false prophets. Yes. Find the promises so of true. God in the word. Yeah. Find them yourself. All right. When the word is preached, find a promise of God in that. Yes. The word is preached. Right. If you don't go to a spirit filled church, find a spirit filled church. Start learning the word because you're going to find the promises of God there in that go. word. It's true. Right. Not in all these false lying heretics that are that are going to split hell wide open sooner than you think. So God said to me, tell my people to figure out a battle plan because I'm sending them into the promise. Wow. That's right? so powerful. Now that doesn't mean that he's do, doing it right. He, he's leading us yes. into the promise. He's yes. taking us yes. into the promise. Amen. But we have to take the, the promise, promise, right? That's right. Christianity is not a grace game. All right. Uh, it's to grace is to draw you to the Lord, all right, to draw you in, not to let you get away, right? Right. It is the opportunity to be and have and do and achieve and overcome and possess and defeat the enemy because of God's promise to you. Now, what you're going to do with all that, right? God is a God of faith. Yes, He is. He's not. He's not just, listen, when Israel was being obedient and moving forward mm -hmm. from, it, from, from bondage, yeah. he showed himself mm -hmm. day and night. Mm -hmm. He provided yes, supernaturally, he mm -hmm. right? He fought for them, right? He, he opened up the Red Sea. He destroyed Pharaoh's army. He fought for them, right? Yeah, but sure they had did. to keep moving forward. Yes. What were they moving forward towards? Promise. The promise, right? Hello, they were, and when they got there, he told them, "Okay, go take it." There you go. And they're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> "No, yeah, yeah. got to take it." Got to take it. Amen. So the Lord told me, "Now this is this is the the I'm ending, but this is what I got to say. Now what you gonna do? Amen. What you gonna do? All right. So listen, that's what I got for you tonight. I hope you it blessed you. I hope it Bless encouraged me. you. I hope it causes you to, to your faith to rise up and want to kick the snot out of the devil. Amen. So listen, we love you. Sunday morning, man. I got a word. I got a word, word, word. Sunday morning, 9 a.m. at 14172 Avon Avenue in the beautiful city of Lathrop. Uh, I'll see y'all here, there, or in the air. Amen. God bless.